This is the best I feel about this team. I now believe we have a chance. We made a giant step in the right direction tonight. A giant step. We're on our way. We're on our way. The remaining one heartbeat, that's going to be the key to this whole thing. And our leadership is going to be the key. And that's why I feel really good that, you know, tough times. We're going to get out of it because I got tough kids and because I have great leaders. You know, in the early years, it was building this thing. There were a group of us that were coaches here. We set this standard, and we, we became great friends in doing it, and family became a very important issue. Um, and I think all of us decided that, you know, this is a home for everybody. And that if we bring these players in and teach them about family and teach them about loyalty and things like that, that we, we could have great success. And, and really, that's what we did. And this idea of family has, has blossomed over the 20-some years and, and, you know, it's been a hard place to leave. Over the years, the Oakland University Athletic Program has become one of the most accomplished mid-major athletic programs in the country. One reason the teams have thrived is by creating an atmosphere where players across the different sports support each other. This family atmosphere is clearly something that draws recruits to Oakland. And nothing fosters a family feel like continuity. At Oakland, a core group of coaches have been with the program for a generation. Over time, as each program has found success, each coach has been faced with the opportunity to leave Oakland. And each time, their answers have been a respectful no. They say no because their work is not yet done, or because there is so much pride in what has already been accomplished. Simply put, they say no because Oakland is home. Greg Campy has called Oakland home since 1984. In that time, he has been named the Division I National Coach of the Year after leading his team to a league championship in its first season in Division I. And he has been named Summit League Coach of the Year more times than any other coach in league history. Off the court, his teams have the state's highest graduation rate and are among the elite in NCAA academic progress reports, which measures a school's ability to graduate players. For that contribution, among others, he was recently named to Oakland's Hall of Honor alongside longtime swimming coach Pete Hovland. It was an honor he was quick to share. I want to thank the players. Uh -huh. It's really, you know, every group is a different group. You learn from every group, and uh, it's a hard thing to explain to people that the bond that you have uh, between yourself and players. And it's an honor. It's a humbling honor to, to be able to be included in something so special like that when you're still employed and still working. So, you know, it, it, it was something that meant a lot to me. I think it's something that's going to mean a lot more when I am no longer working here, you know. It is in the middle of the season and we're pushing forward and so it was a great two days to, to you know, we had, it was over homecoming week, a bunch of players came back and uh, so it, it was a lot of fun and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to have, uh, to be a member of the Hall of Honor at Oakland University. While Campy was honored for adding to the winning tradition at Oakland, over the years he has developed a personal tradition designed to help him with the daily grind of the basketball season. Bowling is, is a pressure release thing, you know. I, got a, I have some really good friends and uh, one of the things that we started doing years ago is in the summertime we play golf on Wednesday afternoons and in the winter time we bowl and when we're in town I make sure I take three hours out of my day and, and go and bowl with them and I'm probably the worst bowler in America. From October to the end of March at Oakland University we work every day. We work Christmas Day, we work the day before Christmas, we work every Saturday, every Sunday um, and as a coach you can really get caught up in that and you can I mean, it can be, you know, head down, 
and go about it. And I just learned years ago, I, you know, there's some times that you just need to step back from it. So I kind of made sure that every Wednesday for three or four hours, I walk away and do something away from basketball. And then uh, I'll come back Wednesday night if, and get back to work or, you know, so it's, it's just kind of a pressure release. It's a lot of fun. That's campy. Everybody yell shot, right, Val? Yes, coach. Then why aren't we doing that? Everybody yell shot. Make sure you yell shot. Let's go. We got to do the little things right, right? Yes, sir. We don't do them very well, do we? No. Nope. Let's do Let's the little go. things right. Let's go. I have a very good staff. And, and I think one of the reasons I have a very good staff is I let them coach. They really run the practices, and I'm more of a, you know, I, I guess I believe I have this football mentality, having been a football player. And, you know, in football, it's very, very evident that the position coaches do the coaching and the head coach walks the field and, you know, steps in when he needs to. And that's really how we run our practices. I let our position coaches do the majority of the work at practice. Um, for me, it's, it's there to make sure that the practice is running the way I want it to run and that we're teaching and learning the way I want the players to learn and the coaches to teach. And then I'll put my nose in there now and then. But for the most part, I let the the staff do the, the coaching. Your effort was great, intensity was great, competitiveness was great. We got better today. Here's Bader again, open for three. Count He's it. got another! Count it. That was a night that we had seven or eight pro scouts in the building. Travis did it on the right night. There it is. Bucket. While some Golden Grizzlies have a good time with half court shots, there is one who takes his shooting more seriously. I go out there and I'll shoot um, with, with Drew just after, after practice or something, and I'll miss a couple shots. Maybe I'll go like. I don't know, 20 for 25, and I won't be happy. I want to get 100%, so perfectionist in me trying to make every shot, I guess. And on a special night in January, Travis couldn't miss, hitting a school record 10 three-pointers. Here's Bader again, open for three. Count He's it. got another. Count it. Travis Bader can't miss. I think it has a lot to do with my teammates. Uh, they were the reason I was able to make 10 out of 14 threes, and uh, Drew Valentine, Corey Petros, always looking to screen my guy, you know, like if I was on defense guarding me, I would, I would hate that job. Here's Bader, he'll fire another three, got it. You know, you have to have a mindset of just trying to get open every time, uh, trying to think what the defender's going to do, how he's going to guard you. Uh, that was a night that uh, we had seven or eight pro scouts in the building, and they were all there to see the Reggie Hamilton-Walters uh, matchup. And I've received more calls about Travis Bader from the NBA since that night than I have about either one of those two. And both of those two are on the NBA right radar, Walters and Hamilton. But uh, Travis did it on the right night. I mean, when, once you start making shots, you kind of think about it. You're like, oh, okay, I'm on fire. But I think that kind of helps you in a way. But at the same time, you go out there and if you start missing shots, you gotta brush it off. You know, you can't you can't think about it like all the shots you've missed. And that man right there, Travis Bader, what a night. A career high 37 points for Travis on 10 of 14 shooting from beyond the arc. Travis is a fun guy. He's, you know, someone that has a lot of personality and um, I think I've helped bring a little of his personality out as well. When we were in high school, we played against each other at a young age. Coming in, we already knew each other, so it was just easy to kind of get along. And throughout the three years, we've just been real close. He's a real laid back type of guy, and I'm real laid back too. We both, you know, like, like similar things. Coaches always make fun of us, call us frickin' frat. If you went around and asked people, if you, like, when, when you see Valentine is better with him, they always say, yeah, I mean, Usually, like, wherever we go, we're together. We know exactly how to push each other's buttons. Bro, I got to mix it up, bro, one time. Can you move? 
Bader. Relax, bro. Today was uh, my turn to drive, so uh, let's roll out, Bader. Fifty one oh six, the spot. Ah, look at that. We got cookies. We got a little ping pong table, a little <laughs> mini. We got the dartboard behind you. We got the game center. Look at this putt putt. We got an arcade in here. Oh, no. Let man, me get that little sweet. short, short okay, putt putt. Tiger it, Woods. All right, this is my room. Uh, you know, got a little sticker right here. Let people know. Trails let Bader. them know whose room it is. Oakland Grizzlies. Not, not, not the uh, most fascinating room. Yeah, his is horrible. We got a little Jersey Shore. <laughs> Can't lie, I'm a Jersey Shore fan. Haven't really kept with it this season, though. Uh, kind of just did this because uh, Val kept complaining my room was a little room boring. Was horrible, man. So I got a couple of my favorite NBA players. Your room's pretty clean, except for this. What's with the trash? Have you emptied this in the last <laughs> year? Uh, yeah, I guess I'm a little lazy sometimes. <laughs> um, kind of let it build, and then once it gets to a height where it can't stack up anymore, I'll decide to take it out. Now we're going into, you know, the uh, master suite. <laughs> Come on in. To my room. Show them the merchandise at least. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. These right here, rings. I keep, um, you know, my, my ch two championship rings right there along with the you know, two medals from winning the Summer League Championships that I'm really proud of. He's a neat freak. He's always cleaning and he's got the uh, the gloves and he's cleaning the bathroom and cleaning up the dishes. And I walk in, he's putting candles out and lighting them. This is our bathroom. Uh, I had nothing to do with this. I want to let you know this is all Drew and it's this Kathy, is Valentine. Kathy Valentine hooked it up. Mom. Hooked it up. We got the zebra, uh, zebra shower player. curtain. Player, Detroit player. Look at these, we got some towels, some zebra style towels. He's definitely gonna be, you know, somebody that's a lifelong friend, somebody that's gonna be in my wedding, somebody, you know, that's always gonna be there for the rest of my life, somebody that, you know, I'm gonna introduce my friends as Uncle Travis, somebody like that. I definitely think that me and Drew are gonna have that just later in life, you know, it's just somebody I can call and talk to if I ever need to, or, if, you know, just a good lifelong buddy. Oakland center Brittany Carnego has already left her mark on the court at the arena. In 2011, Carnego was named to the Division I AAA Scholar Athlete Team and chosen to receive the inaugural Postgraduate Scholarship. The scholarship is a $5,000 grant geared to support postgraduate studies. With the end of her college career approaching, Carnego talked to Shannon Hogan about her accomplishments and her bright future. Does it seem weird? You've been here almost five years now. It's it a huge part of your life. I know it does. Sometimes I joke around and say, oh, "I've been here for half a decade to my <laughs> teammates," and they, you know, they kind of laugh. But it does seem weird. Been here for a while, but it's pretty cool. It's kind of like home. Yeah, it is like home, definitely. So this is our locker room. Nice. Our coaches had it redone. Uh, I think it was my sophomore year. We had like a team contract, and like our team slogan this year was "Together We Can." We actually changed it to together we will because we're really determined this year to you know win the Summit League tournament um, and we just all signed it and it's just really to unify our team. All right we can head to my apartment and I'll go and grab some of my schoolwork and stuff because I probably will go to the library like later on and get some studying and there's definitely a lot of things going on right now in my life um, trying to juggle school and basketball like trying to figure out what I want to do next year if I want to play overseas potentially or if I want to continue with my education and finish my masters and you know maybe get a job so it's you know a lot to weigh out. I plan on going out to Denver right now and it's like a camp where WNBA coaches and the general managers can come out and watch. I think it's like the top 50 seniors in the nation so it's definitely an honor to be invited just to be 
just to be invited in to participate with these other basketball players. So you're from St. Clair. I am. Not too far from here. Nope, it's about an hour. Um, I like the distance. I like being about an hour away from home. I'm really close with my family and my sister, so it's nice that they can come to all of our home games. Um, they do go to some of the away games, but it's nice to have that kind of support. And Brittany had plenty of support reaching a milestone, recently registering her 260th career block, breaking the school record set in 1985. I did know going into the game that I needed two more blocks just to take the, take the record. And so it was pretty exciting when I got it. It was just a really cool moment. My teammates are so important to me. My time here at Oakland wouldn't have been near as great as it was without them. Um, I just love all of them like they're my sisters and we're all really close and I feel like I could call any of them at any moment if I needed them or needed to talk to someone and, and we're just a really tight knit group of girls. Since I am a senior it just means a lot to me and I know it means a lot to Sharice and the rest of the team but this is our last go around so I really would like to win the Summit League Tournament. Only time will tell if Carnego's accomplishments will earn her a spot in the Oakland Hall of Honor. But if she does, she'll join this year's inductees, men's basketball coach Greg Campy and men's and women's swimming and diving coach Pete Hovland. You're going to go reverse IMs, four lengths freestyle. Can't think about Oakland University athletics without thinking about the swimming programs. A rich history uh, and traditions in our sport here at OU. And, and uh, we've been fortunate that we've been able to continue it at the uh, Division One level. You had the support, you know, f right from the beginning, from the grassroots all the way up to the top. So it made the transition, and then with this, um, it, it makes it, uh, it made it all pretty easy. And, and uh, I think that kind of has it has helped cultivate and keep that tradition going. As the transition has been good from facilities to support to scholarships, and uh, and now competing at the Division One level. As most people know when they talk about swimming, one of the usually the first questions I get is, you guys, you guys train twice a day? Do you guys swim four or five hours a day and lift weights and run and do all those kinds of things? And you get up at six o'clock in the morning to swim and that, that goes into our sport. That's a big, big part of it. But we don't think it, it as being very unusual because it's something we don't know anything different. Uh, discipline wise, they learn from a very, very early age that you know if you want to do this and you want to be successful, these are the things you need to do. I think that culture of, of, of success and that tradition of success is something that we, we continue to, to, to stress in our program, um, to try to you know, act and, and do everything we can to be champions every single year. You're, you're gonna find Oakland amongst the, you know, some of the top swimming uh, names in, in, in the country on an annual basis. Okay, let's have a good workout. We don't need great plays. We need solid offense, all right? It's mid-February. There's not much time left. If I've got to come in here and tell you you need to come to play, we got problems, all right? You've got to be able to see that the end is near, that the dream that you've all dreamed and everything we've worked for is right around the corner. And you can't just flip the switch on March 5th. You've got to be playing like this going in there, all right? And I believe we are. I believe we're on our way up there. The problem with us is because we're such a young team, we don't understand how, how to do the little things. Well, it's February. It's time to start understanding them. It's time to do them. It's a chilly day here in Rochester, Michigan. We welcome you to college basketball today, featuring the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. He's averaging 17 off the bench this year. And he'll fire his first three of the game and nail it from the corner. Here's Bass now with four to shoot. Bass driving, and the finger roll lays it in off the glass. Iowa! With a value on this side. There's Gaines with the lefty. Nice kiss off the glass. Our, our defense has been solid except a couple breakdowns. A couple breakdowns and they got points. You know what I'm saying? If we don't have those breakdowns, they're not, they've got nothing. There's Hamilton driving and scoring. He'll fire up a three from the wing. Got it. Reggie Hamilton answers with a three with one second left. And that's how the first half will end. Coach, obviously a pretty far, hard fought first half. Just give us your thoughts on your team's play. Well, I thought that we played very well offensively early. Then we couldn't make shots. 
missed a lot of easy shots. We missed three or four little ones. And those things have a wearing effect on you. You make those shots and get a 15-point lead, it's a whole different game. But when you miss them, they've got some good players that are going to make plays, and they did, and they got back in the game. So what's happening is, you know, we get a seven, eight-point lead, we miss a bunch of free throws. We miss front ends of one and ones. You know, we've missed seven, and, and we've missed two front ends of one and one. So we might as well say we've missed nine. And that's the little things. Those are the things. It's, it's not anything to do with talent. It's not anything to do with the game plan. It's not anything to do with anything. All right, right from the start now, we need four defensive stops in a row. All right, let's go. One, two, three. Win the day. Finish strong. Hamilton with a nice bounce pass, and this time Valentine converts. We don't need great plays. We need solid offense. All right? Giving him an opportunity here to go up double digits with the make. Hamilton with that make. Reggie with a quiet second half. Here's Bader. He'll fire up a three. Take that, he says. And OU wins it 93 82. All right. All wins are good. We'll take this one. It's kind of ugly at times. Uh, you know, a lot of missed easy shots, a lot of missed layups. Uh, but we made big shots when we had to. I think all of us decided that, you know, this is a home for everybody. And that if we bring these players in and teach them about family and teach them about loyalty and things like that, that we, we could have great success. And, and I think kids today like that. I think that they, they're looking for something like that. And, and uh, they really grasp it and they live it and then they're the ones that foster it. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm like the, the old grandfather now, you know, who sits back in a rocking chair and watches the, the young captains take over the family and run it. Follow the Oakland Golden Grizzlies as they travel to South Dakota for the Summit League Tournament. The action begins on Saturday, March 3rd on Fox Sports Detroit Plus.